hours and we just hit the 40 mile mark! Up wait, baby! Inspired by a speech I heard on social media back in 2022. You will leave this beach Saturday night and you will paddle 80 miles across the ocean back to Florida. I decided to take on an endurance challenge of a lifetime. But there's a bit more to it than that. Right, so here it is. In 2020, a powerful new cystic fibrosis drug was approved for use here in the UK. Referred to by many as a miracle drug. 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 It has changed my life drastically. Caftrio, or Trikafta as it's known overseas, is transforming the lives of people living with CF. Just like, well, me. My lung function improved by more than 40% overnight. And I swapped brutal coughing fits and thinking I was running out of time for, well, running four times. Longer and harder than I ever thought I would. So what's the problem? Well, unfortunately, as a wise man once said, the world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. Because Vertex Pharmaceuticals, the amazingly greedy company that makes this transformational drug, demands £311,000 per patient per year, which unsurprisingly for many makes access impossible. So this is a story about Team Neil, and I desire to take on an epic challenge. But it's so much more than that. It's a chance for me to demonstrate the power of Tricafta, to raise money to support people living with CF, and crucially, to highlight the campaign for global access. It's a story about the right to breathe. And as one of my best mates, Peter Oakton, says, I was ready to go to war with the boys. Lord, I thank you for Mark's health and his ability to, to take on this journey and this quest. Yes, it's crazy, but I think that's one of the great things about the challenge. And personally for me, there were times when I think that Mark's now approaching the average life expectancy for someone with CF. The crossing for CF is an epic 80 mile endurance event. Participants must set off from Bimini and paddle for 80 miles until reaching Lake Worth, Florida. Born from the heart of one man and the love for his daughter who was born with CF, it challenges paddlers to go the distance across the highly unpredictable Atlantic Gulf Stream. The question is, do four inexperienced paddlers from the UK have what it takes to get across? You are about to take on one of the most challenging things you have ever done. I guess we'll find out. I've never got involved with anything like this in the past. My best mates in the team will tell you, when we were growing up, you know, through our 20s and 30s, very rarely talked about CF. I was very closed about CF. My reasons behind being so closed off, you know, and not wanting to talk about CF was the reality of it. CF is a devastating condition. Every single person that I've ever known personally with this condition by the time I reached my 20s, there was just a few of us. By the time I reached my 30s, it was just me. And um, it doesn't take a genius to work out what comes next. Right, so it is five o'clock in the morning. The boat has arrived, Warren's arrived. The bags are in and we're about to go to the ramp to travel to Bimini, finally. Let's do something epic. Let's go. <laughs> but I've never done anything like this. I've never tried to attempt something so physically demanding myself due to my CF. You know, our interactions as a team have always been nights out, weekends away, uh, getting on it you know, having fun. And whilst I think this adventure is gonna be one of the 
if not the most fun and memorable time we ever had as a group. We've never done anything that has got this, this serious, powerful meaning behind it. Here we go. And I think it will only bring us together closer as a team. And I do think it will be one of the things that we, we remember forever. We always look back on. Are we ready to go? Is this, Is this We're off. We, we are ready to go. Cool. So, real quick safety information. Under my butt back here, there's a little green thing. It looks like an old school Nokia telephone. Yeah. That is the old shit device. He has one as well. I have one as well. You would just Boys. open the antenna, hit, yeah. the, red hit button, the red button, oh yeah. shit button, the, hold on. The there. Coast Guard will come find that device. Yeah. If you are attached to it, they will come find that device. Yeah. If you're not attached to it, they will come find that device. Yeah. <laughs> so stay with that device. Okay, oh shit device, stay with it. Got it. That stretch of ocean seemed to go on forever. And for the first time, my eyes were really opened as to what me and the boys had got ahead of us. Still the best is yet to come. Doing this event is important to me because I want to live life a bit more. Obviously I want to do this for Mark and seeing how his reaction has been to Tricafty. I want to give that opportunity to more people in the world. I think it's right to do that. I've never done anything like this before. No, I've never challenged myself in this way. And I want to see how I handle it. Yeah, buddy. Came to me. You pulled me from the deep. My lightning in the dark. Sapphire to this is the beginning This is the beginning This starts right here On two, on two Right, we're all checked in, we're back on the boat We've met the guys from Pipers We've got loaded up with free gear I've got a swag bag full of kit and I've got my red CF Warrior wristband which identifies me to other CF people here doing the crossing to make sure that we keep a good distance. We are here, we're ready, we're a team, we've got our captain and crew and we're all registered, there is no turning back now. Let's do something epic boys, let's go! This starts right here. Right, it's nine o'clock at night, and just as we should be going off to bed, we're going out for a nighttime paddle. I'll be honest, I'm a little bit scared, but we're going for it. We're starting here, we're heading out of Bimini Cove and onto the ocean. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Wish me luck. There's something eerie about heading out into the ocean at night doesn't feel right. I thought I was confident. But when Ryan said those words... Now you're in the ocean, mate. I just froze. Paddling into the darkness was the thing I was most anxious about. 
in the run-up to the challenge. I mean, you don't go near the ocean at night. <laughs> you certainly don't enter it and get on a paddleboard. But I was also aware that life can get pretty amazing when you take a deep breath. That is the bit for me that makes the hairs on my arms stand up and end. Embrace the uncomfortable. It's going to take some real strength to just get through that. Get through that. And face your fear. Coming back in after our first team nighttime paddle. And right there is Ryan bringing us home. What a night. Tomorrow we do it for real. Wow. So it is eight o'clock at night. It's the 24th. And today is the day. The time is now. In one hour, we have to go and register, go and check in as a team. And then from there, in the words of Travis, we stay relaxed, but energized. Relaxed and energized. See yourself paddling for hours in the dark. Relaxed and energized. Because in three hours' time from that moment, I will be launching from the beach on the paddleboard. Into the darkness. <laughs> it's out the stupid. Emotions hit me because I couldn't help but think how lucky I was to be here. With gratitude that my health allows me to be here. On this island, with these boys, with this community. And thanks to modern medicine, I'm about to do something epic. I'm so thankful to this team been incredible. Every single one of them. I've known Pete since I was tiny. And uh, any time I've ever asked anything of him, he's always been there. Strong, great friend, loyal. I can't think of a better team member. We've got Ryan. I've known Ryan for 20 years, and again, he's never let me down. He's injected so much fun into this, into this whole experience. I just wouldn't want to do it without him. And to Goosey, there's absolutely no way I'd be here without Goosey. So thank you, mate. We've been so lucky, so lucky with every aspect of what we're doing here. And we seriously looked out when it came to the captain of our support boat, Captain Warren Peavy. What a man. So generous, so kind. The moment we met Warren, it was one of those experiences where you meet someone for the first ever time and you feel like from that moment, right from the, the offset, you feel like you've known them forever. So Warren, if you see this, mate, just know that you have been a fundamental part of this whole experience. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Ah, it feels daft getting emotional about all this. It really does. Getting emotional about getting on a paddleboard. But this event, it's so much more than paddleboarding, that's for sure.
So wish me luck. And we'll see you back at home. Love to all. just a sense that something big was around the corner. It felt like we were queuing for the unknown, for an unpredictable journey that places us at the mercy of nature. And I got the impression that we weren't alone in feeling this way. Our behavior body language mirrored, with fear echoed on the faces standing all around us. All right, Mark, you're number 15, so you're going to go to the second window and get bag number 15, and your paddler packets have inside of them. They're going to have your Garmin GPS tracker that's going to go on your PFD. You're going to have your numbered bib that goes on your front left thigh, and then you're going to have an RFID timing chip, and you can put that on your wrist, your ankle, whatever you guys want. Sound good? Do you have your whistles? Yes. Do you have your glow sticks? Yes. Do you have your vest? Yes. Yes. Oh yeah. You're good. good. To go. I'm so excited. Cheers, man. Cool. Guys. Start. Oh, you're doing about seven now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The most memorable thing to happen in the apartment before we left was without doubt Warren's prayer. We were all in the apartment and we were literally just about to leave when Warren asked the guys if, if we could all just come back, just take a moment and him say a prayer. In, in a weird sense, it almost felt like a bit of a war cry of this is it, let's just, let's just do it. We're here, we're together and we are going to achieve this goal. Without hesitation, we all agreed. We thought it was a great idea, and uh, we all stood silent. We all closed our eyes, and Warren just started to speak words that were so calming. Um, so it, it was nourishing for me personally, knowing that I'd got the first stint on the board, knowing that it was me that had to lead the team. It was, it was such a nice reminder of the support that we have in the guys, but also in, in Warren as a team, as a, as a captain of the boat as well. Because we knew that his only priority was our safety. Lord, we just pause here tonight to give you thanks for the, the beautiful ocean that you've created. Lord, we thank you for the good weather we've had while we were here. Lord, I thank you for Mark's health and his ability to, to take on this journey and this quest. Lord, I pray that you give these guys strength as they paddle throughout the night and through the day tomorrow. Lord, I pray that you give us calm seas. I pray that you give us safety as we travel back to Florida. Lord, I pray that you give safety to all of the crossing crusaders, all of the people that are supporting them, the support boats, the captains. Lord, I pray that you uh, you just make this an epic night for, for all of them. Lord, I ask all these things in your name. Amen. When I heard Warren get to the end of his prayer, I was ready to go to war with the boys.
beach. We're surrounded by paddlers, all ready to set off. My guy over here provided the light. I'm excited. I'm filled with anxious energy. The light comes from my heart. Yeah, it's not. It's this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm nervous. I'm excited. But this is what I signed up for. Yes! Team Neon, we're in the alpha wave. In other words, we get to go first. And thanks to a good friend of mine, I thought about something that one of my good friends told me, which was to bring it back to your breath. My friend is called Chris Marsh, and about three or four days before we set off, he came over and did a breath workshop with me. Everyone else is talking, laughing, joking. I just sat down and I put my arms like this under my chin, resting on my knees, and I just started to breathe. Closed my eyes, I was listening, but I was taking long, drawn in breaths, four seconds in, eight seconds out, and I just started to try and be present, you know, listen, use my senses, and calm my breath. And then the next thing I knew, we got the sign. First wave, Alpha, get into the water. Just like Travis said, I was relaxed and energized. But nothing could have prepared us for what came next. Mercifully, Warren's prayer was answered. What I pray that you give us, calm seas. Daylight emerged and calm waters came with it. through the worst of it. We're through the dark. We can see what's going on. We can see the water around us. We were just, we were in a flow by that point. Changeovers were pretty slick and we were just motoring. You gotta find your people The ones that make you feel all right But can you wanna stay up with all night you gotta find your people, the ones that make you feel whole. They won't leave your side when you lose control. The ones that don't let you lose your soul. Right, so we're just checking in. It is, what time is it, Ryan? Nine o'clock. Yeah, dead on. Nine o'clock in the morning. We've been paddling for how long? Nine hours. Nine hours, and we just hit 
the 40 mile mark! Hot white baby! Yes! As we turned north, the Gulf Stream assisted us, rolling beneath the board, easing us forward, almost as if she knew exactly where we were heading. The heat was extreme. We were tired and running on empty. But with a view of nothing but blue, inspired by this incredible event, we powered on thanks to one simple rule. The radio chatter was the last thing we expected. It told us that something big was on the way, that might mean our mission ends early. It was the most memorable moment for me when we heard the US Coast Guard coming over that radio. The lads had started talking about, I can't wait to reach the beach. People aren't gonna believe that we, we, we've completed this as fast as we have. On the radio, we started to hear that there was a storm coming in and it was getting closer and closer. We as a team didn't want to accept this. We wanted to paddle to the end. We'd signed up for 80 miles. We wanted to do 80 miles. We said to ourselves, let's just keep going. And when the storm reaches us, then we'll move. When it's no longer safe for us to get in the water. Straight wet, on it, boys. straight on it. We are going to get wet. Anything that's not in a dry bag, or it's going to get wet. I need to suck some shit out. You're right, mate. Suck the wheel. Let's move, let's move. Let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go. Oh, I guess stupidity and, and courage made us continue on and Warren wanted us to keep going as well. Unfortunately, eventually, the US Coast Guard came over the radio. No matter who you are, what team you are, what division or category you fall in, you need to get into the boat and come to within five miles of Lake Worth Pier. That final radio message came just as the storm arrived. We raced through it, and at that moment, we're thankful we weren't still paddling. We missed just five miles, but I was so proud of the lads for not giving up. I know my team, I know they'll go away going, ah, oh, what if, you know, and maybe there'll be an element of, we didn't quite do the 80 miles, but my message to them would be to say, look at what you have what done. At the beginning of our mission, an experienced paddler by the name of Shannon Lockhart told us something that stuck with us the whole way across. Embrace the suck. Before you know it, it'll all be over. And she was dead right. After one last push, the other side of the storm, the next thing we knew, Team Neon had done it.
What's it say there? Do something epic. Cheer, boys. Cheers. <laughs>